Dedication to Queen Elizabeth I From the Translators of the 1560 Geneva Bible To the most virtuous and noble Queen Elizabeth, Queen of England, France, and Ireland, etc., your humble subjects of the English Church at Geneva, wish grace and peace from God the Father through Christ Jesus our Lord. How hard a thing it is, and what great impediments let, to enterprise any worthy act, not only daily experience sufficiently showeth, most noble and virtuous queen, but also that notable proverb doeth confirm the same, which admonishment us that all things are hard, which are fair and excellent. And what enterprise can there be of greater importance, and more acceptable unto God, or more worthy of singular commendation, than the building of the Lord's temple? the house of God, the church of Christ, whereof the Son of God is the head and perfection. When Zerubbabel went about to build the material temple, according to the commandment of the Lord, what difficulties and stays daily arose to hinder his worthy endeavors, the books of Ezra and Esdras plainly witness, how that not only he and the people of God were sore molested with foreign adversaries, whereof some maliciously warred against them, and corrupted the king's officers, and others craftily practiced under pretense of religion, but also at home with domestic enemies, as false prophets, crafty worldlings, faint-hearted soldiers, and oppressors of their brethren, who as well by false doctrine and lies, as by subtle counsel, cowardice, and extortion, discouraged the hearts almost of all so that the Lord's work was not only interrupted and left off for a long time, but scarcely at the length, with great labor and danger after a sort brought to pass. Which thing, when we weigh aright, and consider earnestly how much greater charge God hath laid upon you, in making you a builder of His spiritual temple, we cannot but partly fear, knowing the craft and force of Satan, our spiritual enemy, and the weakness and inability of this our nature, and partly be fervent in our prayers toward God, that he would bring to perfection this noble work which he hath begun by you. And therefore we endeavor ourselves by all means to aid and to bestow our whole force under your grace's standard, whom God hath made as our Zerubbabel for the erecting of this most excellent temple and to plant and maintain his holy word to the advancement of his glory, for your own honor and salvation of your soul, and for the singular comfort of that great flock, which Christ Jesus the great shepherd hath bought with his precious blood, and committed unto your charge to be fed both in body and soul. Considering therefore how many enemies there are, which by one means or another, as the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin went about to stay the building of that temple, so labor to hinder the course of this building, whereof some are papists, who under pretense of favoring God's word, traitorously seek to erect idolatry, and to destroy your majesty. Some are worldlings who, as Demas, have forsaken Christ for the love of this world. Others are ambitious prelates, who, as Amasa and Diotrephes, can abide none but themselves. And as Demetrius, many practice sedition to maintain their errors, we persuaded ourselves that there was no way so expedient and necessary for the preservation of the one and destruction of the other, as to present unto your majesty the holy scriptures faithfully and plainly translated according to the languages wherein they were first written by the Holy Ghost. For the word of God is an evident token of God's love and our assurance of His defense, wheresoever it is obediently received. It is the trial of the spirits, and as the prophet saith, it is as a fire and hammer to break the stony hearts of them that resist God's mercies offered by the preaching of the same. Yea, it is sharper than any two-edged sword to examine the very thoughts and to judge the affections of the heart and to discover whatsoever lieth hid under hypocrisy, and would be secret from the face of God and His church. So that this must be the first foundation and groundwork, 
according whereunto the good stones of this building must be framed, and the evil tried out and rejected. Now as he that goeth about to lay a foundation surely first taketh away such impediments as might justly either hurt, let, or deform the work, so is it necessary that your grace's zeal appear herein, that neither the crafty persuasion of man, neither worldly policy or natural fear, dissuade you to root out, cut down, and destroy these weeds and impediments, which do not only deface your building, but utterly endeavor, yea, and threaten the ruin thereof. For when the noble Josiah enterprised the like kind of work, among other notable and many things he destroyed, not only with utter confusion, the idols with their appurtenances, but also burnt, in sign of detestation, the idolatrous priests' bones upon their altars, and put to death the false prophets and sorcerers, to perform the words of the law of God. And therefore the Lord gave him good success, and blessed him wonderfully, so long as he made God's word his line and rule to follow, and enterprised nothing before he had inquired at the mouth of the Lord. And if these zealous beginnings seem dangerous, and to breed disquietness in your dominions, yet by the story of King Asa it is manifest that the quietness and peace of kingdoms standeth in the utter abolishing of idolatry, and in advancing of true religion. For in his days Judah lived in rest and quietness for the space of five and thirty years, till at length he began to be cold in the zeal of the Lord, feared the power of man, imprisoned the prophet of God, and oppressed the people. Then the Lord sent him wars, and at length took him away by death. Wherefore great wisdom, not worldly, but heavenly, is here required which your grace must earnestly crave of the Lord, as did Solomon, to whom God gave an understanding heart to judge his people aright, and to discern between good and bad. For if God for the furnishing of the old temple gave the spirit of wisdom and understanding to them, that should be the workmen thereof, as to Bezalel, Aholiab, and Hiram, how much more will he endue your grace and other godly princes and chief governors with a principal spirit, that you may procure and command things necessary for this most holy temple. Foresee and take heed of things that might hinder it, and abolish and destroy whatsoever might impair and overthrow the same. Moreover, the marvelous diligence and zeal of Jehoshaphat, Josiah, and Hezekiah are by the singular providence of God left as an example to all godly rulers to reform their countries and to establish the word of God with all speed, lest the wrath of the Lord fall upon them for the neglecting thereof. For these excellent kings did not only embrace the word promptly and joyfully, but also procured earnestly and commanded the same to be taught, preached, and maintained through all their countries and dominions binding them and all their subjects, both great and small, with solemn protestations and covenants before God to obey the word and to walk after the ways of the Lord. Yea, and in the days of serving Asa, it was enacted that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be slain, whether he were small or great, man or woman. And for the establishing hereof, and performance of this solemn oath. As well priests as judges were appointed and placed through all the cities of Judah to instruct the people in the true knowledge and fear of God, and to minister justice according to the word, knowing that, except God by his word, did reign in the hearts and souls, all man's diligence and endeavors were of none effect. For without this word we cannot discern between justice and injury protection and oppression, wisdom and foolishness, knowledge and ignorance, good and evil. Therefore the Lord, who is the chief governor of his church, willeth that nothing be attempted before, we have inquired their oath at his mouth. For seeing he is our God of duty, 
we must give him this preeminence, that of ourselves we enterprise nothing but that which he hath appointed, who only knoweth all things, and governeth them as may best serve to his glory and our salvation. We ought not therefore to prevent him, or do anything without his word, but as soon as he hath revealed his will, immediately to put it in execution. Now as concerning the manner of this building, it is not according to man, nor after the wisdom of the flesh, but of the Spirit, and according to the word of God, whose ways are diverse from man's ways. For if it was not lawful for Moses to build the material tabernacle after any other sort than God had showed him by a pattern, neither to prescribe any other ceremonies and laws than such as the Lord had expressly commanded, how can it be lawful to proceed in this spiritual building any other ways than Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is both the foundation, head, and chief cornerstone thereof, hath commanded by his word. And for as much as he hath established and left an order in his church for the building up of his body, appointing some to be apostles, some prophets, others evangelists, some pastors and teachers, he signifieth that every one according as he is placed in this body, which is the church, ought to inquire of his ministers concerning the will of the Lord, which is revealed in his word. For they are, saith Jeremiah, as the mouth of the Lord, yea, he promiseth to be with their mouth, and that their lips shall keep knowledge, and that the truth and the law shall be in their mouths. For it is their office chiefly to understand the Scriptures and teach them. For this cause, the people of Israel in matters of difficulty used to ask the Lord either by the prophets or by the means of the high priest, who bear Urim and Thummim, which were tokens of light and knowledge, of holiness and perfection, which should be in the high priest. Therefore, when Jehoshaphat took this order in the church of Israel, he appointed Amariah to be the chief concerning the word of God, because he was most expert in the law of the Lord, and could give counsel and govern according unto the same. Else there is no degree or office which may have that authority and privilege to decide concerning God's word, except withal he hath the Spirit of God, and sufficient knowledge and judgment to define according thereunto. And as every one is endued by God with greater gifts, so ought he to be herein chiefly heard, or at least that without the express word none be heard. For he that hath not the word speaketh not by the mouth of the Lord. Again, what danger it is to do anything! Seem it never so godly or necessary, without consulting with God's mouth, the examples of the Israelites, deceived hereby through the Gibeonites, and of Saul, whose intention seemed good and necessary, and of Josiah also, who for great considerations was moved for the defense of true religion and his people, to fight against Pharaoh Necho king of Egypt, may sufficiently admonish us. Last of all, most gracious Queen, for the advancement of this building and rearing up of the work, two things are necessary. First, that we have a steadfast faith in Christ Jesus, who must dwell in our hearts, as the only means and assurance of our salvation. For he is the ladder that reacheth from the earth to heaven. He lifteth up his church, and setteth it in the heavenly places. He maketh us lively stones, and buildeth us upon himself. He joineth us to himself, as the members and body to the head. Yea, he maketh himself and his church one Christ. The next is, that our faith bring forth good fruits, so that our godly conversation may serve as a witness to confirm our election, and be an example to all others to walk as appertaineth to the vocation whereunto they are called, lest the word of God be evil spoken of, and this building be stayed to grow up to a just height, which cannot be without the great provocation of God's just vengeance and discouraging of many thousands through all the world, if they should see that our life were not holy and agreeable to our profession. For the eyes of all that fear, God in all places behold your countries as an example to all that believe, 
and the prayers of all the godly at all times are directed to God for the preservation of your majesty. For considering God's wonderful mercies toward you at all seasons, who hath pulled you out of the mouth of the lions, and how that from your youth you have been brought up in the holy scriptures, the hope of all men is so increased that they cannot but look that God should bring to pass some wonderful work by your grace to the universal comfort of His church. Therefore, even above strength, you must show yourself strong and bold in God's matters. And though Satan lay all his power and craft together to hurt and hinder the Lord's building, yet be you assured that God will fight from heaven against this great dragon, the ancient serpent, which is called the devil and Satan, till he have accomplished the whole work and made his church glorious to himself, without spot or wrinkle. For albeit all other kingdoms and monarchies, as the Babylonians, Persians, Grecians, and Romans have fallen and taken end, yet the church of Christ, even under the cross, hath from the beginning of the world been victorious, and shall be everlastingly. Truth it is that sometime it seemeth to be shadowed with a cloud, or driven with a stormy perfection, yet suddenly the beams of Christ, the Son of Justice, shine and bring it to light and liberty. If for a time it be covered with ashes, yet it is quickly kindled again by the wind of God's Spirit. Though it seem drowned in the sea, or parched and pined in the wilderness, yet God giveth ever good success. For He punisheth the enemies, and delivereth His, nourisheth them, and still preserveth them under His wings. This Lord of lords and King of kings, who hath ever defended His, strengthen, comfort, and preserve your majesty, that you may be able to build up the ruins of God's house to His glory, the discharge of your conscience, and to the comfort of all them that love the coming of Christ Jesus our Lord. From Geneva, April 10, 1560.